<sighs> so, how awkward is that? How unexpected is that? That did not go according to plan, right? No way. What were you expecting? Some sort of show, huh? Some sort of comedy act? This guy comes out, can't speak, there's no microphone. Didn't go according to plan. And that, of course, is the moment where we want to begin here at Transform. And first of all, welcome all of you here to Rochester, Minnesota, to what I like to think of as the Orlando, Florida of healthcare. Um, <laughs> And uh, all of you from the uh, Mayo community, welcome to you as well. This is uh, Transform 2012. I am John Huckenberry. I am both a uh, end user of the healthcare system and as I like to say, sometimes one of its victims. And uh, as your host for the next couple of days, I wanna lead you through this experience that I think most of you, if not all of you in healthcare have regularly. The idea that things don't go according to plan that there are awkward pauses and silences in the best laid plans of all of you, and that adjusting to those awkward, not planned, what the hell just happened kind of moments is really what the system is about. And dealing with those moments, capturing those moments, and extracting the wisdom from those moments is what transform is all about and what innovation in healthcare is all about. And that's what we really want to explore over the next couple of days. And I've got a little metaphor here for you. Um, you'll notice two uh, wheelchairs here. Very different. Um, this one I've used for a couple of years. That one I'm actually pretty scared of. Um, <laughs> But both of these devices are both designed and manufactured by companies in the healthcare field. And uh, I think they serve as a reasonably compelling metaphor for what it is we're gonna be thinking about over the next uh, couple of days. Um, this chair has uh, some modifications on it that uh, I wanna show you. Um, I think some of you who were here last year might have seen the cool wheels that light up that my uh, daughters insisted that I get years ago. Um, they're now teenagers, and me having those wheels mostly embarrasses them, uh, but that's what happens when you're a dad. Um, and, you know, it's got some custom-made uh, wheels on it that I like to use. A lot of people uh, move with the hand rims up here. I kind of like it down here just because it's my own personal preference. Let me get back into this chair here, and I'll sort of give you a sense of what my life is like physically. Um, these transfers, even though you can read about them in books, everybody does them differently. PTs know how to teach these kinds of transfers, but for everyone it's different because everyone's, if they're a spinal cord injured individual like I am, everyone's injury, lesion, level of paralysis is a little bit different. But uh, as you can see, this chair fits. It's kind of cool. A lot of people sometimes say, Whoa, is that a racing chair? <laughs> and the reason they ask that is not because I'm racing, and do I look like I'm racing? I mean, if you watch the Paralympics, you actually can see real racing chairs. They only have three wheels, and they look like they're from, you know, Mars or something like that. They don't really look like chairs, and you can't use those in practical day-to-day -day life like I use this chair. Uh, but the reason people say it's a racing chair is because they don't, really have a, a, a category for understanding that my life is a collaboration between my physical self, my personality, my set of expectations, and this device called uh, a wheelchair. And that collaboration is not unlike the collaborations that you have in healthcare, and it's not unlike the collaborations that any of us have in life generally, when we want to solve a problem or achieve a goal or or um, you know, accomplish a mission of one kind or another. Now, with this chair on the other hand, and it's got some adorable design features, um, some of which were not developed in the Middle Ages. And, 
as you can see, the design features for this chair are mostly about making it fit everybody, the small people and the larger people. And as you can see, it's a little more difficult to get into. If I land on the floor, the crew is ready, I assure you. And then we'll, all right, now you run along and play with the other wheelchairs. I'll be right back. Now, I think of a wheelchair as, as uh, you know, a lot of people say you're confined to a wheelchair if you're a spinal cord injured individual. And, uh, you know, I, I, I love that term because it's so incorrect. I'm enabled by a wheelchair. The last thing I am is confined to a wheelchair. When I get in my chair, I'm free. I'm unconfined. I'm able to move around. Now, this wheelchair, on the other hand, um, makes me look completely different. It makes me look a little confined. Um, I'm very uncomfortable in this chair. This is not something I want to collaborate with at all. And in this chair, I look like there's something wrong with me. Yet, it gets the job done. It gets me moved from here to there. It's not a relationship that I want to have, and believe me, I want to get out of this chair almost immediately. Yet it carries the proud logo of a proud institution, and you can find chairs like these in a lot of proud institutions. Cleveland Clinic has them, Mount Sinai Hospital has them, Minneapolis St. Paul Airport has them. Um, they're all over the place, and they're what people think of when they think of wheelchairs. Because this is the prevailing notion, this is the set of expectations, and this is the sort of one size fits all construct that we've come to understand in healthcare. And this is how that construct affects me personally. You can see how just difficult this is. But welcome to my life. <clears throat> I'm so glad that's over. <clears throat> so if your institution, if your healthcare mission, if your advocacy, if the service you provide is going to have a chance to create a lifelong relationship with the end user, the client, the patient. You don't want to use this as your model. If you're behaving like this, one size fits all, lead with the logo, and basically create something that gets you from the taxi or the ambulance to the front door of the institution, or from the front door of the institution to the vehicle that takes you home, then that's all of a relationship you're going to have. Yet, if you have a device or a service or an institution, or as a practitioner, if your approach is no, I want to create something that's lasting, that lives with the individual, that is part the individual's creation as well as my creation, then you have a chance at a collaboration that lasts a lifetime. It is that sense of collaboration, it is that sense of systems that we will try and create and explore that do exactly those kinds of things, create those kinds of collaborations that we want to aspire to at this meeting. I want to thank all of the great sponsors that make uh, an event like this possible. You'll see 
them, their names uh, all over uh, the facility here at the Civic Center in Rochester. Um, please thank them. They're here not only because they're interested in the same kinds of things that you're interested in, uh, they're interested in what you have to say about either their business or just the general business of uh, healthcare. So please open yourselves to them. As I said last night in the opening, what we aspire to at this meeting is to think of innovation and design thinking in healthcare as a subspecialty. And so that you will think of this meeting or some meeting somewhere, some gathering somewhere, that it, this is a candidate to be, I, I suppose, as something you need to visit every year in the same way that the gastroenterologists have to get together every year and the uh, orthopedic surgeons have to get together every year and there's a transplant conference because there is a sense and an expectation and a need on the part of healthcare practitioners to, to, to share, to collaborate, to see what's the cutting edge of research in medicine, in caregiving, in hospice care, and palliative care, and you're gonna hear all about all of those things today. But we think of Transform as the professional society meeting of people who dare to think differently in healthcare. And each year, the loyalty of you has improved, and we wanna take a step forward this year. And in the course of doing that, we wanna invite you into the conversation, as we do every year. Um, I said last night, the politicians and the healthcare policy types who spend a lot of time writing the headlines and delivering the news about healthcare, they dominate what Americans think about their system. And the political discourse that we have now, as uh, Richard Gephardt said last night, is so extraordinarily degraded that people don't have a sense of where we're headed, how the system should work, or even how the system does work. And the politicians, simply describe the, either the present system or the future in, in catastrophic terms, generating fear but not understanding, uh, generating perhaps passion but no clarity. And so what they won't say, we will here on this stage. What they in the policy realm and in the political realm won't ask, we will. And begin by asking yourself, what should we do today to address the issue of, of uh, reform and innovation in healthcare? What should we do in a year? I want to know the answer. If you have those kinds of questions and those sorts of to-do lists in your mind, we want, to, we want to hear them, we want to see them, we want to share them from this stage. There'll be all sorts of opportunities for you to collaborate in that way and to share your sense of priorities. General Electric here is uh, sponsoring a, a crowdsourced collaborative effort to get ideas from all of you, and we'll be sharing that later on uh, today and uh, tomorrow. But what do we need to do today? What do we need to do in a year? And what do we need to do in five years? What's the most pressing question today? The most pressing question over the next year? The most pressing question we'll all be confronted with in five years. That's our aspiration. That's where we want to head. I want to thank the great crew here because uh, uh, they make this show possible. Dr. Nick LaRusso and the people at the Center for Innovation, Bill Drentel, the extraordinary uh, designer and uh, design critic who designed this entire program, and uh, uh, Linda Downey, uh, Jerry Greeny, and the collaborators that I have to make this uh, great conference because if I don't thank them now, I'll forget once we dive into all of this. I said at the beginning, this is the Orlando, Florida of healthcare. Uh, what if this was more like a theme park and you had, instead of, you know, big, you know, college kids, or I, I guess they'd be interns here, uh, dressed up in, in, like, big radiologist suits or something, <laughs> you know, instead of Mickey Mouse and, you know, Pluto, there'd be, there'd be a, you know, transplant surgeon in a big, big suit. I guess there'd be a, a Saudi Arabia ride somewhere, probably, and, uh, uh, the, the idea of a theme park is, is both playful, but it's also important in the sense that it creates a community for the moment that you're here. And that's what's wonderful about the Mayo community, and that is what I think is wonderful about uh, Transform. So have a great time here. Remember, you're on duty. We want to hear what you have to say and what you think. And, uh, we really hope that by the end of this, you'll think, boy, 
that's, that's the cutting edge of innovation thinking in healthcare, and I'm gonna make sure that I come back here to stay abreast of what's going on in my field, because that's what we think of this as, a field.